Welcome back, boys, to another episode of Low Spec Labs. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about GNS3. I've gotten a lot of questions about this software on my TikTok channel, as well as a couple questions here on YouTube about what I use to make my network diagram software. Let's go ahead and let's dig into GNS3 a little bit more. What is GNS3? GNS3 is a network mapping and emulation software. Keyword there being emulation. Its most powerful feature is its ability to create a network map and then spin up the nodes in those maps. So GNS3 is able to virtualize server operating systems, networking and routing appliances, basically anything you are able to virtualize regularly you can use gns3 to virtualize but unlike other virtualization platforms like hyper-v esxi or even proxmox you get a map of your virtual appliances so this is a good way for you to build out networks and test different technologies let's get into installing and configuring it right away so because gns3 is open source it can be run on basically anything the very first time i ran it it was on an old gaming desktop I had built back in high school. It was a Core i5-2500K with 8 gigs of RAM and I think a 500 gig SSD or maybe a 128 gig SSD with like a 500 gig hard drive. It wasn't very powerful but it was enough for me to spin up a few network labs and practice enough with Cisco iOS images to get my CCNA. I feel like it paid off. Okay cool. So let's take a look at the system requirements for GNS3. Minimum system requirements is two or more cores, four gigs of RAM. The cores must have virtualization enabled and you must have at least one gigabyte of storage. There's two different parts to GNS3. There is the server and there is the client. If you're running just the client, these specifications will be more than enough. If you're trying to run the GNS3 server, I highly advise that you invest in more cores and more RAM. My minimum requirements if you're running GNS3 as a server is to have at least 16 gigs of RAM, to have at least four cores, and to have at least, I'd say about 250 gigs of storage, whether that be SSD or hard drive. But I hope for your sake it's SSD. The server edition of GNS3 can be installed on both Linux and Windows based systems. From my own experience running it, I highly advise you install it on Linux based system. It's a lot easier to get it installed on Linux. It's a lot easier to add the Docker extensions on Linux. It's a lot easier to edit and manage your virtual machines and your custom iOS images and Dynamaps images on Linux. Generally, if you install it on Windows, what's going to happen is Windows will install Hyper-V and then it's going to install uh, GNS3 inside of a Hyper-V guest. So you're doing nested virtualization anyways, where with Linux, you can just do standard virtualization rather than having to be two layers deeper in the stack. So I already have a GNS3 server spun up that I'm actively using for my videos. I'm not going to walk through how to install Ubuntu. I'm going to assume you kind of already know how to do this if you're watching these videos. So step one, Install Ubuntu. Step two, once you have Ubuntu installed, go ahead and go to the console of your Ubuntu environment, whether that's a laptop, a desktop, a virtual machine, or a Proxmox host, whatever you prefer. Just go ahead and log in and we can get started. So it's a movie magic. I spun up a brand new Ubuntu server. Let's walk through installing GNS3 as if we were installing it for the first time. Let's pull up a SSH session. And let's go from there. So the very first thing we want to do after we get our SSH session or after we get into the server is run an app get update dash y and app get this upgrade that's why. We go ahead and let that run. And after a few seconds we can see everything is upgraded and there's nothing we need to update, which is good. We can then proceed to the next step. Let's see. So, the very first thing we need to do is add the GNS3 repo to our server. To do that, we do a add app repository PPA 
colon GNS3 floored slash PPA. We hit enter and we allow it to go ahead and install. Perfect. After that, we're going to run an update. Then from there, we can do an apt install and we can install GNS3. So Yep. Should non super users be able to run GNS3? Go ahead and hit yes. Should non super users be able to capture packets? Hit yes. Right now we're logged in as our root user. Eventually when you're using this, you don't want to be logged in as root. You want to be logged in as a standard user and have that standard user have the appropriate permissions to GNS3. Cool. And with that, GNS3 server and GUI is now installed. But wait, there's more. The next thing we want to do is add IOU support. This is if you want to spin up Cisco images. So what we have to do is type in the package, add architecture. I can remember how to spell three, eight, six. Oh. D package D package. And we run another app get update. Then we do an apt install chns three IOU. And we let that run. So now that that's done, we now want to install Docker. All right, so GNS3 allows you to spin up Docker images. I find it very useful if you want to spin up a web service really quickly. It's convenient to download the Docker file, type in a couple commands, and you have the server spun up in a virtual network. So let's walk through the install of that. So first we have to install some dependencies. So very first thing we want to do is add get install app transport https ca certificates curl and software properties common and then of course we wanted to automatically do all that so we'll let that run those are basically the dependencies that docker needs to be installed so looks like most of those are already installed on this host all right let's see here the next thing we need to do is import the official Docker key. So in order to do that, I'll walk through this command with you. So I copied this from the Docker website. The command is, I'm also going to post it at the bottom of the YouTube video. It is curl dash FSSL and then the link to the Docker key. And then it adds that key using a pipe command. Cool. So now that it's there, we add the right repo. So for us to add the repo, we can do this sudo add apt repository. I like to break these commands down. So it's sudo add apt repository. We then enter the Debian repo in the first line, and then we blind break to a new line and we enter the rest of the repo. All right, cool. And then we should just be able to run an app get update. Hmm. And then app get install docker C. Perfect. So we'll allow that to finish as well. All right, cool. So after that, we have to add our user to the appropriate groups so that it's able to use GNS3. So what we can do is sudo user mod add groups ubridge libvert oh. ubridge libvert kvm wireshark docker lsl okay cool all right and with that we should now have gns3 officially installed 
So let's go back to our GNS3 server. Go ahead and close this SSH session and open up the console. As you can see, we have the user LSL. Let's go ahead and let's log into that user. And let's click here. And in here, we should have GNS3. And look at that. And of course, we can open it up. And next, and it's going to ask us where we want to run GNS3. Make sure it's set to localhost. Hit next, next, finish. We're not quite done yet. We now have to enable the server mode of GNS3. So what you do is you hit, hold on, file, or rather edit, preferences. You then go to server. You click enable local server. You then, hold on, do 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 binding there we go so you enable local server and you set the binding to zero 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 or you can set it to the actual ip address of the host but if you set it to zero 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 it applies for all ip addresses it just makes things a little easier after that you hit apply and then you can hit ok let's wait let's see it's stopping the server and it's going to spin it back up okay cool and with that, we now have JNS3 running, right? And if we can verify that it's running, because all we have to do is do a quick IP address. And we can see we have 192.168.122.1. So if we were to go to 192.168.1. Oh, let's see. Oh, 1.159.159.159. .159. Ah, and GNS3 is asking us for a password. So let's go back into the GNS3 server again. Go back into here, edit preferences, and server. Protect server with password. Hit apply, hit OK. And now when we go to GNS3, as you can see, we now have that new server spun up at 192.168.159. 3080.